In your high school American history class, whenever you were talking about the Civil War, my guess is that your discussion was pretty much limited to uh, Gettysburg and Vicksburg, maybe Shiloh, Antietam, and Sherman's March to the Sea, and then that was the complete uh, survey of your study of the Civil War. But what if I told you that there was a battle that took place in the latter part of 1864 in the Western Theater that involved a Confederate charge over open ground that was further than what Pickett's charge was and resulted in more casualties. Well, that would have taken place right here, just south of Nashville at the Battle of Franklin. And there was a serious bloodletting that took place right here on these grounds. I'm super excited because today uh, I'm going to be linking up with Eric Jacobson, who is the CEO of the Battle of Franklin Trust and quite literally wrote the book on the Battle of Franklin. So I'm always looking for people who are smarter than me that I can learn from. And uh, I think that today is going to be one of those days. Super pumped. Okay, so I am here at one of the key sites of the Battle of Franklin, and uh, I could tell you what I know, or I could defer to somebody who actually knows what he is talking about. This is Eric Jacobson. He is the uh, CEO of the Battle of Franklin Trust, and uh, yeah, he and, and a couple others here at the Battle of Franklin site are going to kind of walk around with me today. and. Uh, basically teach me uh, some, some things that, that I don't know. So I guess maybe, um, can you tell me a little bit about the, the big picture of what's going on that, that kind of sets up the Battle of Franklin? Like okay. why, why did this happen? Well, we're, we're just happy you're here. So um, this is just a great opportunity for, for more people to learn about what happened in Franklin. And it's sort of the big picture. This is late in the war. So this is, this is the last, as we call it, last great campaign of the war. It happens after the fall of Atlanta. So John Bell Hood, who's in command of the Southern Army, is really just trying to drag the war out. He's trying to do everything possible to not lose the war, for the Confederacy not to lose, and, and ultimately he's trying to retake the city of Nashville. Nashville had fallen early in the war to U.S. troops, so Hood begins moving up through Middle Tennessee with just over 30,000 men under his command. He was opposed by a similar number of troops under the command of John Schofield. They'd been sent back here by William Sherman a few weeks earlier to try and help defend this area. So everything moves very quickly for about a week before the Battle of Franklin as the two armies move up through areas um, like Lawrenceburg and Pulaski and Columbia and then Spring Hill where Schofield escapes. But it all culminates here at Franklin and, and we're we're standing just inside the U.S. defensive line, so everything becomes just a ferocious series of explosions through this area on November 30th. But it's, um, it's really as bad as, as anything um, that happened during the war. The, the conflict here was incredibly violent and bloody. And I think it's really a culmination of this long three and a half year war. And, and as I've been saying for years, I think to really understand how the American Civil War ends, you gotta come to Franklin. So in 1864, uh, Hood was coming up out of the South. His army was really in a bad shape. Uh, as a matter of fact, Hood himself was in a bad shape. One arm was withered from an injury at Gettysburg. Uh, one of his legs had been amputated. About a quarter of the Confederate soldiers that were marching with him were doing so in shoes that were either rotten or they didn't have shoes at all. So th this, is a, this is an army that is kind of on, on their last leg. They're, they're a little bit desperate. Now, where they would have advanced from is to the south, or from the south, right here, towards 
Franklin headed towards Nashville. The Union Army was to the north, outside of Franklin, and where they first would have engaged the Confederate soldiers is right here at this place called Carnton. All right, now here's the house that I was just referring to called Carnton. And man, this is a behemoth of a house by today's standards, much less by Civil War standards. Um, I was just told that the outer walls are three bricks thick and the inner walls are two bricks thick. So this would have been, this would have been a house of a, a very wealthy family. But during the Battle of Franklin, it would have been turned into a Confederate field hospital. So we're gonna go in and check out this house and see what it looks like on the inside. Before we go into the house, I did wanna make quick mention of this. This is the, the back porch of Carnton. And there is a story that Nathan Bedford Forrest, who's a pretty well-known general of the Confederacy, uh, used this back porch as an observation post or it could have even been up here on the second level, which would make, make a better point of observation. Uh, that can't be confirmed with 100% certainty, but, but that's the story. What we can say for certain is that Nathan Bedford Forrest was here and, uh, and crossed the grounds here at Carnton. So here at Carnton, we have a kind of a unique situation because when the Confederates get here, they take over this house for use as a hospital. And so even though it looks like a normal house set up right now, you would have had an army chaplain and what we believe is about eight surgeons for the Confederate Army who come into the house and they pretty much start having soldiers push furniture to the corners of the room and they set up their tables. And then as the Confederates start taking casualties on the field, they were brought into rooms like this. And if you can see, you know, kind of how the floor is set up right now, Imagine all the furniture stacked up in the corners and this floor would literally be covered with wounded men. So in each room, they're going to bring somewhere between 30 to 40 men and lay them in the floor of each room. And these men are being triaged as they're brought in. The doctors are looking at them on a case by case basis, kind of looking at their casualties, seeing what their injuries are and if it's viable to conduct surgery on that man. Um, some of these men require something as light as a bandage. Some of them require full-blown amputations on one or more limbs. And as the doctors are working, they pretty quickly get overwhelmed because this house would have contained all of the casualties from Loring's division. So we know that he takes about 672 casualties during the battle. It's very possible that there was somewhere between five to 650 men in this house or around it. Um, probably in excess of three to 400 physically inside of the home, probably another 150 to 200 out on the grounds. And as they start working their way through the soldiers, they would work on a man, nine to 15 minutes on the table, pull him off, put somebody else on. And so as these surgeons are working in these rooms, they're working from the start of the battle, well into the night, then into the next day. And then by December the 3rd, they have to pack up their stuff and leave because they are going with the Confederate Army. It's part of their job but they leave all the wounded here. So as we're talking about what these people are going through, their house has literally been taken over for use as a hospital. And after you get through two days of surgery and the doctors finally leave, then you have all these soldiers who are either going to recover or die. And so what you eventually get into is not just one day, one week. These people are here for months taking care of these soldiers. And one of the last soldiers to leave here is in June of 1865, seven full months after the Battle of Franklin and two full months after the Civil War has ended. So this house was a hospital for the better portion of the really last year of the war. Okay, I uh, just made my way upstairs here at the house at Carnton. And uh, man, what went on in this place during the Battle of Franklin is almost beyond human imagination. And I really want to show you something in this room right here. 
Now, this room was originally the nursery in the house, but turned into a surgical ward. And if you look over here, those dark spots are the blood stains of Confederate soldiers. Absolutely unbelievable. And then you can go over here and see some of the surgical instruments that would have been used by uh, doctors at that time. Which looks quite medieval. But wow, that, that makes it a little more real. I'm back out here on the back porch. And something that's kind of interesting about this back porch is that during the Battle of Franklin, there were six Confederate generals who were killed. So, so this was devastating to their leadership. Well, four of them were laid out right here on this back porch. Pretty crazy to think about. That was legitimately cool. Uh, I don't know of any other Civil War battlefield that you're going to be able to visit and see anything like that. Uh, that, that was seriously awesome. Uh, now, the, the direction that I'm facing is to the north where the Union artillery would have been positioned. So if I kind of turn around here, you see these fields behind me. This is where the Confederates would have advanced and uh, I guess just got cut all to pieces as they were moving north towards the Union line. All of this took place in a day. Uh, so this is, this is uh, really a more violent version of Pickett's Charge that we're talking about, uh, looking at, at this battlefield and uh, the movement from, from this eastern flank all the way up to what's called the Carter House, which is where we're going to be heading to next.